when it comes to tank development, there are always going to be ups and downs. Some tanks fail due to a simple lack of funding, or for other mundane reasons, while others fail in spectacular fashion. In this video, we're going to be looking at the latter. It's a new series I'm trying out, so let me know if it's something you enjoy. Today, our subject is the T-28 Super Heavy Tank, an American project that was created during World War II. While the T-28 program sort of just slowly died instead of being a massive dumpster fire, I think it was doomed from the beginning. Anyway, let's get started. Around 1943, the US Ordnance Department concluded that the German West Wall, also known as the Siegfried Line, would significantly impede the Allied invasion of Europe. To remedy this, they proposed the construction of a vehicle with two things, heavy armor and a powerful gun. This vehicle was specified to have 8 inches, or 203 millimeters, of frontal armor. It would also use an electric transmission. These had already been tried before, but were found to be too heavy and difficult to maintain. The vehicle would make use of the newly developed T5E1 high-velocity gun. This was a modified version of the T5 105mm cannon, having its barrel lengthened from roughly 48 calibers to 65. It was very effective against fortifications, the intended target of the vehicle. The Ordnance Department wanted to get these vehicles over to Europe as fast as possible, as they did with most of their projects. They estimated that, in around 8-12 to 12 months, 25 vehicles could be completed. However, the Ordnance Department weren't the only ones that sway in the vehicle's development. Army ground forces, in typical fashion, disagreed with the Ordnance Department, saying that they only wanted three vehicles, and that they wanted it to use a mechanical transmission. Eventually, the two parties worked everything out, agreeing to the construction of five pilot vehicles. The tank, now designated the T-28 Heavy Tank, was changed out 12 inches of armor instead of 8. As proposed, it was going to be turretless and low profile. It would also use HVSS suspension, and a 500 horsepower 4 GAF engine. There was only one secondary weapon, a skate-mounted 50 cal in the commander's cupola. The lack of a coaxial machine gun seems odd at first. However, the T-28 probably wouldn't need to engage infantry. When someone realized that tanks, under American doctrine, were supposed to have turrets and coaxial machine guns, the T-28 was renamed the T-95 gun motor carriage, putting it in the same class of self-propelled anti-tank guns and artillery. By 1945, no T-95s had been completed, as it was a low-priority project, and most factories were already occupied. Eventually, a manufacturer was nailed down, and towards the end of 1945, two vehicles were constructed. However, no more were going to be made, as at this point, the war had obviously ended. Despite this, the vehicles were still used for experimentation. As mentioned earlier, the T-95 used the Ford GAF, a 500 horsepower engine also used by the M26 Pershing. Given its roughly 86 metric ton weight, that gave it a power to weight ratio of 5.3. Needless to say, this made the T-95 significantly underpowered. Why didn't they go with a more powerful engine? I'm willing to bet it's because they wanted it to be constructed as fast as possible, and that's just what was available at the time. The final drive ratio had to be adjusted, giving it a top speed of 8 miles per hour, or 12 kilometers per hour. Despite this, both the engine and transmission suffered breakdowns. It also had excessive ground pressure, requiring an extra set of tracks. In mid-1946, it was renamed yet again, this time to the T-28 Super Heavy Tank. It was decided that no vehicles that heavy should be developed again, so testing stopped. One T-28 was scrapped, while the other was lost in an open field behind a bush. The latter has since been recovered and is now on display. The T-28 program was a failure in many ways. None were even made when the Siegfried Line fell. To take care of the Siegfried line, troops in Europe simply used artillery pieces for direct fire. I don't understand why it was made for such a specific task, or why its performance would be so incredibly unbalanced. It didn't turn out to be reliable, and the tests conducted using them were essentially pointless. It really had nothing going for it. That's pretty much all there is to say on it. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.